Hello and welcome back to our video roundup. I'm Rowan Hooper and I'm going to take you through our best science videos of the last week. To start with, we have the first ever video footage of a desert rodent called a jerboa. Sandrine Kerstemont tells us how researchers from the Zoological Society of London tracked it down. Dr. Jonathan Bailey and his team recently went to study jerboas and captured the first known footage of the animal. It took us two days drive into the Gobi to get to the area where we found the, the um, long-eared jerboas. We had to stay up all night because they're obviously nocturnal. We set pitfall traps. We were on a motorbike with a large spotlight uh, looking for jerboas in the night. Well, using the spotlight uh, approach, we came across many different species of jerboa, but we caught the long-eared jerboa in the pitfall traps. Despite being cute and furry, Bailey is interested in this species of jerboa because it's highly threatened. It lives in the desert environment, which is very sensitive uh, to any, uh, any use of, of, of the water. So we now have agriculture and we have mining, illegal mining in the region. And it's alarming that you have agriculture in a desert, but they were actually growing things like watermelons. Um, and it's really unsustainable practice. And so when you're using those limited water resources or contaminating those limited water resources, you affect not only the jerboa, but a whole range of species that are dependent on this water. Unlike animals like the giant panda, there are no programs to help protect the endangered jerboa. Bailey and his team have just set up studies in China to help figure out the best way to protect them. On the other side of the world, there's another animal that needs protection. Outbreaks of sea lice are threatening wild salmon on Canada's west coast and new research suggests it could drive them to extinction within four years unless the farms are moved or made watertight. The tiny parasites infest young pink salmon on salmon farms and eventually kill them. Young wild salmon shouldn't be affected because any infected adults are usually far from the coast when the young ones migrate out to the sea. But salmon farms are close to the shore and young fish catch the lice as they swim by. Salmon populations are already declining in the region. Sea lice and salmon obviously have problems coexisting these days. Our next video shows two other creatures who are learning to live together, humans and robots. You may have already seen Asimo the robot, but its maker Honda has now developed technologies that will allow it to better interact with people. With a little artificial intelligence, it can carry a tray or push a trolley. It can also use its eye camera to detect if a person is approaching. By calculating the speed and direction of the person, it predicts where he or she will end up. Asimo can then decide how to avoid the person. If there's not enough space to move forwards, it can take a step back and let the oncoming traffic move past. Asimo can also take charge of its energy levels. When battery levels are low, it identifies the nearest charging station and powers itself up. While Asimo is visualizing people, scientists at the European Molecular Biology Lab in Germany are visualizing human skin at very high resolution using a new technique called cryo-electron tomography. Here are images of sections of skin cells after they were instantly frozen and observed under an electron microscope. The different images were then assembled by a computer to create a 3D representation called a tomogram. Filters were used to remove noise from the image and to identify the structures within the cell, which were then coloured in. Here, the mitochondria are purple and the nucleus and nuclear envelope are blue. The researchers also visualised cadherin proteins, which are embedded in cell membranes and help cells stick together. The grey and red ribbons represent the cadherin molecular structure and the researchers discovered that they actually bind twice once to a cadherin molecule in the same cell membrane and again to one in the neighbouring cell. This type of Velcro system explains why human skin is so strong. And that's all for now. But for more science stories and videos, you can check out our website or buy the magazine. See you next week.